Hi guys! So a couple of months ago I made a video about the top 5 funniest books that I've ever read to give you some inspiration for books with which to beat the darkness of the season or if you are in the southern hemisphere to give you some inspiration for light summer reads. But now we are smack in the middle of sad season. Do you say sad or sad? Anyhow, you know what I mean. The days are getting longer but come February I'm always at the lowest point of the year and the darkness is beginning to get to me. So I thought why not embrace it and have compiled a list of the five saddest books that I've read or at least five books that have made me cry. It used to be very hard for a book to do that. I only really started crying over books in my late twenties. Nowadays it's very easy for a book to bring me to tears. Nowadays even the mention of just a particularly cute dog will make me cry, but it used to be much harder for books to do that. So these might not be the top five saddest books that I've read after all, but they are five books that have made me cry. I'm going to start the list with a fantasy classic, The Last Unicorn by Peter S. Beagle. This is the story of a unicorn in her forest who one day learns that she is the last unicorn that is left in the world, that all her brothers and sisters have somehow vanished. As she is later informed, they were hunted down by a King Haggard and his Red Bull. Now this revelation throws the unicorn's world upside down completely, because being an immortal being who was, who was not born and who is never going to die, it has never even occurred to her that the world around her is changing because for her time does not even exist and it hasn't even occurred to her that things are not always, have not always been like they are at any given moment. But now that she has learned about this, she is never going to get peace anymore and she has to go on a quest to save her brothers and sisters. And on this quest outside her forest, on the way to King Haggard's castle, she comes into contact and experiences and learns about all these concepts that were hitherto unknown to her, like mortality and decay and fear, but also friendship and love. You might be familiar with the film, with the cartoon, if you haven't read this book anyway. And if you are familiar with it, you will know that it is ripe with melancholy. But the book is even more so and it is much more serious. It goes much deeper philosophically. And the unicorn is a much more alien creature and it is a somewhat uncomfortable read at times to be seeing, to be reading this story from the perspective of such an alien being. But it is also one of the most beautiful books that you will ever read. Trust me on that. My next book is a Victorian classic. And isn't it always a nice surprise when a classic turns out to be actually a good book <laughs> and, and a, a pleasant read? Great Expectations by Charles Dickens. This is the story of Pip, short for Philip Perrip, who comes from very humble circumstances and he is orphaned and grows up with his sister and her husband. And one day he suddenly starts to get a generous allowance, which apparently comes from his wealthy neighbor, Mrs. Havisham, who is the adopted mother of his childhood crush and, and the, the great love of his life, Estella. And Mrs. Havisham apparently now seeks to make a gentleman out of Pip in order to make him an appropriate husband for Estella. So Pip goes to London and gets an education with his new money and does his best to rise above his humble origins and his common upbringing. Okay, spoiler. It just destroyed me having to watch how 
th having to watch this tragic blindness with which Pip stumbles through life and destroys everything that was good in it and his beautiful relationships with his family and with his hometown for this fantasy that the reader knows is just never going to become real anyway and in the end he is literally standing in the ruins of this fantasy and everything his whole life and that was just so surprisingly hard hitting and emotional and really a pleasant surprise. That was the first Dickens that I read apart from A Christmas Carol and just altogether such a pleasant surprise and I recommend this book for anybody who, who wants to start, who get, wants to get into Charles Dickens and I recommend this over Oliver Twist, which I found a surprisingly boring read, and this a surprisingly emotional one. My next book is much more recent, both in terms of publication date and of when I read it. It was on my best reads of 2019 list, Tin Man by Sarah Winman. This book is about the relationship relationships between two men and a woman, and it is at its heart about how denial can cause people to isolate themselves from even their best friends and their loved ones and how this isolation can cause heartbreak and it is about how a repressive upbringing and a repressive environment can cause people to do that and can cause all this heartbreak. I basically started crying on page three, which is the, an episode in the life of the mother of one of the protagonists, but I started crying there and just never stopped. <laughs> I seriously doubt that I am going to be alone with my next book, Never Let Me Go by Kazuo Ishiguro. This isn't even my favorite Ishiguro, it's only in second place or maybe even just in third place, but it's definitely the one that made me cry the most. The less you know going into this, the better. Let me just say that at its heart this is a story about what makes us human and about what a crime it is for somebody to be denied personhood and to be recognized as a human being. And that's all that I am going to tell you about this book. And my last book is one that I have always meant to advertise more here on Booktube and that I'm certainly going to talk about more in the future. At Swim to Boys by Jamie O'Neill. This is the story of two boys in Dublin, two young teenagers, Jim and Doyle, and the story of their very inappropriate mentor figure. Jim and Doyle are from different side of the tracks, but they meet one day by chance and become friends and then more. And they make a pact that Doyle is going to teach Jim how to swim, which he can't, and that one, one year from then they are going to swim together to a small island off the shore. The problem is that this is the year leading up to the Easter uprising and we all know how that ended and there comes a point in the book when the reader just knows how the story is going to end, especially for one of the characters and then it does end this way and it is just completely heartbreaking and tragic to read. But for all that it is also a very funny book, it is full of witty and sarcastic dark humor and just altogether a joy to read from beginning to end. I am going to talk much more about this book in the future. It is one of my favorite books of all time. So I hope this list has been an inspiration for you if you are also in the mood to embrace the darkness. And I don't know about you but I like a book that makes me cry because that means that it it has brought across some kind of profound emotional truth and has brought it across in a way that seems sincere and that's a good thing, isn't it? I would love to know if you have read these books and if you have, if they have also made you cry. Don't hesitate to let me know about it in the comments. And I'll see you again very soon. Bye!